Hello there, you lovely people. Uh, today I want to talk to you about a game that I played at EGX that uh, really blew me away. It's this game here, it's called Lumo, and it's an isometric puzzler platformer from a uh, game developer called Gareth Noyce. This is a solo project, but Gareth has been a veteran of the video game industry for a long time now. Gareth's worked at places like Bizarre and Lionhead when they were doing games like Fable 2. He was one of the uh, co-founders of Ruffian who did uh, Crackdown and Crackdown 2. And so yeah, he's had a long and distinguished past in video games. But this is his first ever attempt at a solo project. Now the thing I love about Lumo the most is the fact that the whole game is just rooted in nostalgia. If you're a gamer who remembers 80s and 90s gaming, there's going to be so much here for you to enjoy. I played through the demo which took about 25 minutes and the demo was just chock full of cool easter eggs. I mean even this training room where you sort out your controls before the demo starts is a little uh, Easter egg to Street Fighter 4, the training room in Street Fighter 4. Uh, but most of the other Easter eggs are very old school. Uh, when you first start this demo, you can't jump at all. Little uh, wizardy Lumo guy uh, wanders around. You, you bumping into boxes, wondering how to uh, how to progress. Uh, if you walk around and you come into this room, you can see up on the top of this wall what looks like. And this is the first, uh, the first cool Easter egg. What looks like an agility orb from Crackdown. And in fact, if you ride this little elevator up and collect it, you get the agility orb sound and it even acts like an agility orb. So there's lots of um, nods to Gareth's past as a developer as well, which is pretty awesome. Now the game is also full of tons and tons of secrets. I'm going to show you how to get the first secret right now by jumping on these boxes and then jumping up onto this little shelf and then you climb over the wall and grab the audio cassette tape. Woo, happy days. I guess you could say there's a certain Metroidvania style to the gameplay because you have to get items that allow you to unlock doors and then double back on yourself. Now I've got the jump power. It's a lot easier for me to navigate back over these moving platforms that I had to get over uh, on my way here. And that will in turn allow me to reach places in the game world where I hadn't been before. Now according to the press release there's 400 separate rooms in this game with three different world types. There you go, there's another secret right there. And as you go you're going to be building up powers, grabbing more and more collectibles and uh, searching for secrets as you go along, hopefully. Now I couldn't pass this section earlier in the gameplay because obviously I didn't have the jump power. So now I've opened up a brand new route for myself, which has taken me into this room with another cool easter egg. As you can see there's two skulls there stacked one on top of the other and written right next to them are JR and BD was ear. Now JR and BD stands for John Rittman and Bernie Drummond who were the programmer and artist on Head Over Heels which is obviously a massive inspiration to this game. And by the way, there are so many Easter eggs in here that I probably have missed a couple, so uh, please do let me know in the comments if you spot any others. Control-wise, it's a little bit difficult to get used to the old isometric controls. It's been a while for me, but after a while you get the hang of it and uh, you'll soon be bouncing around no problem. This little room here leads to another cool easter egg. I'll see if you can guess what it is. Yep, so it's a tiny little broom cupboard with a Gordon the Gopher picture on the wall. It's basically the children's BBC broom cupboard from way back when Philip Schofield was presenting it. Ah, oh, the memories. Ah, oh, the beautiful nostalgic memories. Every hazard in the game is one hit kill as well, so, you know, no health bars or anything like that. Going back to the old school style of gaming, 
You don't get like three lives and then you have to restart the whole game again though. At least I hope not. You don't in this demo. I don't think I'd have the patience now to complete a game like Head Over Heels in one sitting. There we go, grabbed a map using the uh, magical box. The map's not available in the demo version though, so a bit of an anticlimax. The map would probably be quite useful as well because, to be honest with you, I kept getting lost. Um, I kept getting turned around and forgetting which direction I was going. I think that's because all the rooms are so small and you can't see where they, you know, where the doors lead to. So, you know, you, you can't really build up a good mental map. Now, embarrassingly, I can't put my finger on what that Easter egg is for. It's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember it. So do let me know in the comments so I can kick myself later on. Ah, uh, oh, it's annoying that I can't remember it. So we've made our way up this little elevator anyway to grab a spanner. The spanner is going to help us in our quest. Uh, it's basically a key. It's going to do something that will allow us to uh, progress. Nothing else up here though, so let's head down on the elevator and listen to that funky, funky music. Lovely. Still can't remember what that is. God damn it. My stupid old brain. Right, so this is the room where we need to use the spanner. And there we go, instantly gets put on. Push the spanner around, the steam keeps going, and then the conveyor belt moves. Which is awesome. So this conveyor belt here wasn't moving earlier. And look, a cuddly toy! So that is going to uh, allow me to progress down a route that I couldn't do earlier. As we make our way into this room, we pick up a key. That's a key that you need to unlock a door that was right at the start of the demo. Now here's another uh, Easter egg. Gareth used to work for Rare. And as you can see on the box, it says Rare Goods, and it's got a pair of googly eyes. I think those eyes, those eyes kind of remind me of some kind of Banjo-Kazooie type eyes. I could be wrong. But I think that's what they're from. But yeah, some googly eyes on a rare goods box is another little easter egg about Gareth's programming past. And then we finally make it back to the locked door, unlock it with the key. And find another little puzzle here with a rare goods box. Now you'd think you could just do it like that. But, you can't jump up that high. You can push the brown box though, but not the way you need it to be pushed. So what you have to do, come on box. You have to lead the little box around to the back, jump up on it, push the box that way. There you go. And then get the box to follow you back around again. Trouble is, uh, this box has got a mind of its own and he wasn't interested. You need to kind of stand still a bit so he falls in love with you. Go on. Fall in love with him. Go on, box. There we go. And then you lead him on his merry little way. Jump up. Push the box. Jump and collect. And there you go. Demo completed. One gigabyte memory card in the bag. There's even a little in joke to the prodigy there. Take your brain to another dimension. Pay close attention. Yeah, prodigy. So there we go, look, explore 400 rooms. Um, and they're going to be a lot more varied than the ones we just saw in this little Let's Play. Four different zones. I think I said three different zones earlier, but uh, four different zones. So basically, if you're an older gamer like myself, who's lived through many years of different consoles and computers, starting from the Spectrum all the way up to present day, then there's going to be something in here that will make you smile. It's still a while until it's out. Early next year, I was told. Not sure exactly when, but I will definitely be keeping an eye out on this for you guys, and will let you know when I hear more about it, because it just it's just a very cool-looking game, and I like it. I like it a lot.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more from Eurogamer. Goodbye. Let's get it.